Let's see what we can say about MRS when we have convex preferences. Consider an indifference curve described by the function x2 is equal to 16 divided by x1. MRS is the derivative of this function and so MRS is equal to minus 16 divided by x1 squared. For x1 equal to 1, MRS is equal to minus 16. When x1 is equal to 2, MRS is minus 4. When x1 is equal to 4, MRS is minus 1. And when x1 is equal to 6, MRS is minus 16 divided by 36 or minus 4 over 9. As you can see, MRS increases as we move to the right. The absolute value of MRS, 16, 4, 1 and 4 over 9, decreases as we move to the right. Both consistent with the curve getting flatter as we move to the right. Remember that a function is convex if the second derivative is positive. A positive second derivative means that the first derivative, or MRS in our case, is increasing. This is the case for this convex indifference curve. We can see why convexity is such a natural assumption. If you look at the bundle up to the left, the 1,6 bundle, the absolute value of MRS is very large. This means that the consumer is willing to give up lots of good 2 in order to receive more of good 1. Well, that makes sense since she has a lot of good 2 but very little of good 1. As we move along the indifference curve down and to the right, the absolute value of MRS decreases, meaning that she will trade less and less of good 2 for more of good 1. Which again makes sense as she now has less of good 2 and more of good 1. Way over to the right in the 6,1 bundle, the absolute value of MRS is now very low and she is not willing to give up very much of good 2 for more of good 1. We cannot blame her for this since she already has a lot of good 1 but very little of good 2 here. So you can see that it is quite natural for the absolute value of MRS to decrease as we move to the right, which means that MRS will increase as we move to the right, which then means that the indifference curve should be convex. With concave preferences, the consumer would be willing to give up a lot of a scarce good in order to get more of an abundant good. Although this is certainly possible, such preferences will not be classified as well behaved. A quick summary of MRS and convex preferences. Up and to the left on the indifference curve, MRS is small and the absolute value of MRS is large. Down and to the right on the indifference curve, MRS is large and the absolute value of MRS is small. With convex preferences, MRS will be increasing in X1, while with strictly convex preferences, MRS will be strictly increasing in X1. The absolute value of MRS will be decreasing in X1 if preferences are convex, and strictly decreasing if preferences are strictly convex. It is common to say that consumer exhibits diminishing marginal rate of substitution if preferences are convex. Such a statement may seem odd since the marginal rate of substitution increases with x1. However, in this statement, the sign of MRS is ignored. Let's return to the case when our two goods are perfect substitutes. We know that every indifference curve is a straight line, which can be described by a linear function. Such preferences are consistent with monotonicity and convexity, but not with strict convexity. We can see that MRS is constant everywhere, independent of the amount that we consume of each good. If the goods are perfect substitutes in a one-to-one -one ratio, that is, one unit of good one is viewed as a perfect replacement for one unit of good two, then MRS is always equal to minus one. If two goods are perfect complements, then monotonicity holds while strict monotonicity fails. For any bundle which is not at the corner, one of the goods will be a neutral good. On the horizontal part of the indifference curve, not at the corner, good one is neutral, while good two is neutral on the vertical part. Therefore, such an indifference curve is not a graph of any function. Remember that the graph of a function cannot have a vertical section. Since we have no function describing such preferences, MRS is not defined. 
However, we can say that MRS is equal to zero on the horizontal part of the indifference curve, and we say that it's infinite on the vertical part. Fortunately, analyzing consumer behavior for perfect complements is simple. The consumer will never choose any bundles which is not a corner bundle, at least as long as prices are strictly positive. 